One thing we've seen this season in the ACC is that it's, it's tough to win on the road. It is, and when you, when you get a road win, obviously, it, uh, it really helps you out. But uh, I think the teams are, everybody's gotten better. So protecting home court becomes even more important. Uh, but at the same time, you know, winning on the road becomes even more difficult. And, and when you look at, uh, you know, throughout the league, some of the home court advantages with the fan support is really picking up on because I think people realize some of the teams that have been building over the last few years are at a really good point right now. Virginia Tech is one of those teams that's, that's starting to build and, and, and get better. Uh, Buzz has used a lot of different lineups this year. Uh, wh what do you see where they are right now? Well, I think they've, they're playing their best basketball this season right now, um, defending very well, rebounding the ball, uh, and then the ability to score from all five positions, especially when they play different lineups. Um, but probably the biggest thing is the guys are really playing according to their role within the, within the game. And, uh, you know, they, they're like us in some ways in terms of having multiple guys that can lead them in scoring. Uh, and it's been very effective in the first four games in the league. You look at, at their the, the stats, you see that they're getting some real good bench production, especially from Robinson. Yeah. He really picked him up. Yeah, he's the, I mean, he's a jet quick guard, uh, plays with, you know, uh, controlled, reckless abandon, very aggressive, getting to the free throw line a lot. Uh, you know, and so when you put him and Seth Allen out there on the court together, you have two of the quickest guards in, in the country, not just in the ACC. Uh, Consistency, is that something that you're looking for from your team right now? Well, I think it's something you're always looking for, yeah. you know, because with the ebbs and flows of, of our league, you know, to be the most consistent during those 18 games usually puts you in a, in a good position. You know, consistency uh, is always, uh, when you talk about that, that's within what you're doing. Uh, you can't always control what happens with the other team, how they play and, and different things like that. So it's really important you focus on what you need to get done, how you need to play. Um, and, you know, at, at times, uh, you know, we need our, our three, you know, guys that have shown it game in and game out to play extremely well. And then we got to get some other guys to, to kind of pitch in. And when they do that, we become a much different team. Is it too early to start looking at the standings? I know you're only five or four or five games in, but just, I mean, you look at that already, you're two, big, you know, two, three games back, and, you know, you don't want to fall too much further back. Well, it's four games. Yeah, yeah. yeah so no, I, we're not looking at the standings right now. We do know that the team coming in is three and one, and uh, uh, is ahead of a lot of teams that were picked in the preseason prior to that. Um, you know, it, again, when you when you look at some of the early season standings, if you look at them, uh, you go back to some of how the schedules have worked out early season. So, y y you know, obviously the teams that are are have three or four wins already are playing extremely well. Um, but Virginia has two wins, you know what I mean? And, and they're a pretty darn good team. You know? So, uh, you, you know, you, you always, we're, we're always looking at our next game and where we're at, you know? And, and uh, most important thing for us is Saturday at noon. Last Saturday, obviously, a big win here. You know, you try to build off of something like that as a home win, like Rod said, winning at home and protecting home court, as you said. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, we, we talk, we've talked about it. You know, we have, with five seniors, one of the things that they wanted to do is really finally solidify the McCamish Pavilion as a difficult place for teams to come in and be successful. Uh, I think we've built a pretty good foundation, but with eight conference games left at home, now you need to go out there and take care of business. Either as you've experienced the games or going back and looking at them, like what have you seen in terms of the disparity of the following the second half of the three losses? Uh, you, you know, we have to do a better job um, when we get the ball in the post of being aggressive to the rim. And to be honest, you have to put the officials in a position where they have to, you know, make, make a call if there's contact in there. Uh, at the same time, we have to do a better job on the st sticking with the offense. When we have opportunities to drive gaps, right. we have to be more aggressive in, in doing that. And it can't just be Marcus. Mm -hmm. It has to be some other guys. Um, and that doesn't always mean to score. That means right. to drop it off to a big guy, kick it out for a, for a shot. On the other end of the court, we need to do a better job 
in moving our feet and showing our hands on drives because it hasn't the, the the fouls that we've gotten have been more on penetration than on post action okay. so we have to do a better job of playing our help defense not giving up dribble splits but just on the ball being conscious of the fact that you got to move your feet and show your hands and and uh, it's a point of emphasis um, I think they've answered the question of if in conference games are gonna, they going to referee the same way as they did early in the year when the point of emphasis was right. on every media circuit around. And so, you know, we just have to do a better, I have to do a better job of that. I mean, do you feel like you're defending any differently in the second half? Um, there's been no uh, outright ability to see it and say, man, we're not guarding the same way. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, once the, the fouls are called or the bonus comes into play, mm -hmm. obviously everything is magnified in the last 10 minutes right. of a game. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's just something you got to be conscious of and something you, we need to be a little, a little tougher on the ball, a little more disciplined on the ball. You look at the rebounding stats in the ACC, naturally you're, you're up there and that's one of the strong points of the team. Is this game against Virginia Tech one game where you, you really have to take advantage of that, really get on the offensive boards? We have, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you look at the games that we've been successful against the upper level teams, our offensive rebounds have been a big key. Last game in the Notre Dame game, it was the first game all year long where we didn't capitalize on that. And so, you know, again, we had 18 offensive rebounds. So you can never question the heart and the intensity and the energy level of our guys when you get 18 offensive rebounds. It's one of the easiest ways to mark if you're playing hard is on the offensive glass. Problem is we came up empty too many times. And that's one thing that we've solved. I think in, in you know, last year in particular, that was a, a, a stumbling block for yeah. us. Yeah, finishing those plays at the basket. Um, and we've been pretty good in that. But uh, you know, right now with both post action and offensive rebounds, um, I believe only Ben Lammers is our only post player, and he might be under 50% as well. You know, they, you, you know the, the, the thought process of big guys shoot all their shots around the basket so they should make every shot, that's not true. But you have to make half of them, you know what I mean? And so that's on putbacks and on post feeds. We need to be a little stronger on our finishes. Regarding the, the you know, <clears throat> guys using gaps, are you, you're seeing that, I imagine, that Players are on the wing are, are passing up opportunities or, or maybe not seeing them when they could slash to the rim. And, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's some. There, there, there are some opportunities we can do that more. Uh, there are some opportunities we can do that more, both in the open court and in, in the half court. Uh, but you know, again, you know, we're we're a, a, a team, um, and we've been successful, and it's our best, uh, one of our best offensive actions is to, you know. Uh, get the ball inside to the post. Right. So there's different ways to get the ball in the paint. You can mm -hmm. drive or you can post feed. Where some teams are heavy drive, less on the post feed, we're a little more on the post feed, less on the drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about this that makes you call the league and say, hey, can you give me an explanation? Or, uh... I'm gonna stay very politically <laughs> correct on that and right. just pass that question right. by. With, with you talked about the quickness of the Virginia Tech guards. Does that affect how you use your, your guard matchups? Uh, I mean, we, you know, with some of the actions, we're going to have to. Everybody's got to be ready to guard everybody, you know. Um, but they're a team, as we just talked about. As Ken has made a very good point on, they shoot 28 free throws a game. You got to keep them off the. You got to keep them off the line. So, you know, the one thing you have to do is you have to play great on-ball defense and great position defense. 